Hey, it's me, Nelthasar, and welcome to another episode of Achieving Perfection. This is going to be for the Nicole Bolas node in the Elder Spark. So per the usual, I'm going to show off the decks that I would suggest, and then I'm going to get into the event, explain the decks, and then go over deck building if you don't have the cards for either of the decks that I suggest. So for newer players, I would go with Jason Raveler of Secrets, and I would use something like this. Keep in mind, the Mythics and generally the Rares are event rewards, so not as hard to get. And then for players with larger collections, I would go with something like this. All right. Let's get into the event itself. Well, the node, I suppose. I always say the event, but I mean the node. Whatever. So, Nicole Bolas, Dragon God. This particular node, we've got a level 180. It's got 450 health. That's a pretty sizable chunk to take out. The mana bonuses are pretty crazy at plus 6 for everything except plus 9 for black. And then the abilities are draw a card, destroy an opposing vanguard support, and deal 30 damage to your opponent's Planeswalker. Then destroy all your legendary cards and deal 5 damage to your opponent's Planeswalker for each card destroyed this way. Your objectives are to win the fight, cast 3 or more vanguards during the fight, and activate a Planeswalker ability 3 or more times during the fight. The deck itself that Bolas Dragon God uses is right here. This is a new touch for this episode. You can tell me if you like it. Um, so here's the deck that Bolas is using. It only has one creature in it, and that's the God Eternal Kefnet. Other than that, for creatures, it's running a bunch of things with a mass. So we've got Invade the City, Commence the End Game, Enter the God Eternals, Widespread Brutality, and Dread Horde Invasion. And then to take up the third creature slot, it's going to steal your stuff with Mass Manipulation. So, just for some deck building advice, try to avoid putting in creatures that have a converted mana cost of 14 or less. You will see that the decks that I've suggested all have 15 or more creatures so that this card does nothing. And then, be Devil. All right. There's also a support in the form of God Pharaoh statue, and then Finale of Promise. So, the decks themselves. Let's start with newer players. So for newer players, I really like Jason Raveler of Secrets for this node. You do have to be careful of Bolas's third, because that will ultimately take you down if you are not careful, because Jace struggles with life gain. But the plus four, plus four to everything is a pretty big deal. Ultimately, when you're picking your Planeswalker for this node, you're going to want to pick a Planeswalker that's blue so that you can throw in Leyline of Singularity. This card is an event reward. You've got a 1 in 4 chance of getting it the first time you play the event, and then 1 in 3, and then 1 half, and then just guaranteed. So it's going to, when it enters the board, you exile all token creatures. Whenever a token creature enters the battlefield, exile that creature. The overflow removing all buffs from the first opposing buff creature is largely pointless for this because the thing about this node that's going to get you is you're either going to get taken out by all the amass tokens because Bolas has enough mana to just keep casting everything or you're going to get taken out by the mass manipulation taking something really powerful of yours. So if you can avoid both of those things, you're great. And so you'll see that this deck, nothing here costs less than 14 mana as a creature. I'm not using any tokens and I've got the ley line to back me up. So Asperia is just going to fetch more copies of Asperia. It's 17 for a 5-5, five five, but this is really more in here because bl Mono Blue doesn't have access to a lot of 15 or more creatures, unless you start looking at Mythics and stuff. Experiment Kraj is in here for the same general purpose, um, except that it will also go ahead and fill the role of being a blocker, so it can, it can get reach and regenerate, which is kind of nice, and hexproof. So if you can get it with that hexproof, you don't have to worry about Bedevil killing it either. 
We've got Agent of Treachery. This is in case the opponent winds up building up their battlefield too quickly, so you can just go ahead and steal their things and um, laugh at them. Then, Gem Conversion. Gem Conversion is essential. So, Mystic Sanctuary is a common, that's why I threw it in. If you have something better, you can, of course, throw that in. Gateway Plaza, same thing. It's there for Gem Conversion. If you have something better, by all means, throw it in. And then for removal, we've got Discovery, which serves as card draw and also as bounce and kill. We've got Unexplained Disappearance, which is going to bounce and let you surveil. And then we've got Arrestor's Admonition, which is going to bounce and draw you a card. So Jace really likes it when you draw cards because of that Unravel ability. So if you don't have a lot of options at your disposal, Jace is an excellent one. Oh, and for the Vanguard, I threw in Kiora. Kiora is... Uh, planeswalker that is planeswalker a vanguard that you get for playing story missions so this is a card that everyone can have access to now if you have multicolored planeswalkers and you're able to throw in vanguards other than kiora by all means do that uh, that's a much better choice so the more complete deck that i'd use is going to be this one here and so for the vanguards i chose three i chose soren because he's going to give all the creatures lifelink so it makes it so that all of Bolas's damage and everything is meaningless. We've got Tamio, who is going to serve as a combination of card draw every turn. Or if you just put a Vanguard into the graveyard, then you can fetch it and it casts it. So this will help toward that casting Vanguard objective. And then we have Bolas Dragon God, who is also going to serve as card draw but will also be giving you loyalty to help complete that objective where you're trying to activate Planeswalker abilities. Leyline of Singularity is in here too. I would strongly advise that you use it in a lot of different nodes in this event. So if you don't have Leyline of Singularity yet, when the M20 events come out, make sure you do them and get this card. It's, it's really important to have it. For gem conversion, I only have one land here. I have a black land in this one. And I have a black land just so that I don't destroy um, my ley line. I'm trying to make sure that I don't destroy that thing. So for creatures, I like to run for this node Golos, Razia, and Atrada. Atrada is going to wipe away all the Kefnits or any other badness, and then I don't have to worry so much about removal. Razia does a very similar thing, but she's a nasty, nasty angel. And then Golos is going to just let us play a ton of cards, and that's really good. So I like that. Keep in mind, Golos's activations do not count as planes, sorry, Vanguard casts. So if you, if you succeed in using that Activate 2 to Exile and then put those things into play, that doesn't count as casting. And then finally, I've got even more card draw with Finale of Revelation, and then I've got Death Sprout to serve as simultaneous removal and fetch for the Cottage. I should also add that the cottage is in here because it helps fetch creatures back from my graveyard, and I like that too. So this is what I will be using in the event for this node. Now, let's go ahead and say that you're not able to make either of the decks that I just suggested. What should you do? Well, the first thing that you're honestly going to want to do for this is go ahead and type in Vanguard and see what Vanguards you have, because... The Vanguard part of this objective is honestly the harder of the objectives, because if you haven't picked up a bunch of Vanguards yet, then you might have a hard time completing this objective. So go ahead, try and find your best Vanguards, and make sure that you're able to use a Planeswalker that has blue. So ideally, you can complete both of those different things together. So for me, with blue, I went with, um, as you saw, Tamiyo, and I went with Bolas, but you can also go ahead and use any of the other blue ones that you have. You can use Jace to help draw you cards um, and then draw even more and give them half mana. That'll help with completing your objectives. You can go ahead if you've bought Teferi, as that one's been on sale from Fiblethip, that's a great option. Uh, it's going to give your spells mana and it's going to bounce, which is kill for creatures and draw you cards. Rawl is always a great option. I love Rawl. So really just go off of what you have and play to your strengths with Vanguards. Then from there, the next most important thing that you have is, of course, the Ley Line, right? So you really want to make sure that you have Ley Line of Singularity in your deck. This this just, it really protects you. It, it protects your bacon. That's, that's really all there is to it. So you really don't have to worry about very much if you throw that into your deck. 
then from there, you're going to want to go ahead, get into your removal. Now, I like running the death sprout combo. So if you don't, ha, uh, ley line, uh, if you don't have death sprout, then you don't have to use death sprout. You can use some other form of removal and that's fine because there aren't very many creature options for the opponent, especially if you wind up getting out the ley line. You, you don't have to worry so much about removal. You just have to be able to get rid of Kefnet. And then that's really your only concern. And then the other thing that I would do if I were you is I'd go ahead, just type in life and see what is it that you have that can give you life in your colors that you're running. Because if you're, this does not give you life, this is proliferate. If, if you can give yourself life gain in some way, then that's going to make it so that you can survive longer. And then Bolas's abilities don't really hurt you. And it really just becomes a grind to kill Bolas. So those are really my suggestions. Blood Operative is a really nice card to have here. Um, as I said, Soren Vengeful Bloodlord is amazing on this node. But play to the strengths of your cards. Make sure that you've got gem conversion, you've got removal, you've got creatures that have abilities apart from just being beat stick creatures. Um, and then try and throw in good vanguards in the ley line, and you'll be fine. So I hope this helps you. I hope you go perfect, and I hope to see you in the next one.